<laughs> oh man, what a beautiful thing. That sounds so strong. Welcome back to True Champion Gaming's YouTube channel. This will be the final um, episode of our series for the reveals for the entire set. I'm Terry. This is Kaven. Um, I'm representing uh, Naruto today <laughs> for uh, my Weaves of the Shore. So I wanted to, you know, represent a little bit. So um, that being said, we are going to start off right at it into Arcane. And the first Arcane card is Shock Therapy. It's a fast action mage spell with class bonus, element bonus. Whenever this card is banished from your memory, put an enlightenment counter on your champion. And then its ability is deal an amount of damage to target ally equal to the amount of enlightened counters on your champion. What it's do you think? Fast. About? It is fast. Yep. It is. It's a fast spell. So I gave it a three. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> Not I gave, a very exciting first card to talk yeah, about. Yeah. It, it has upside. I gave it a three, two. Um, it has an upside, I guess, like being banished when you're trying to banish cards, um, you know, in Rye and comboing off and doing your thing. It's kind of cool that there are cards that actually have a bonus to being banished. Granted, I hate that yeah, because yeah. If there's one thing you'll learn about me. So I love Rye and I love that deck, but I also hate it because yeah. I think it's super toxic for a game. <laughs> so... Uh, it reminds me of Storm and Magic. If any of you are Magic players, you'll understand. Uh, it's got that very similar vibe to it. And when it's going off, luckily with this set, there is a little more counterplay to it. But mm -hmm. in last set, it's like if they're doing it, yeah, they're pretty much doing it. There yeah. wasn't a lot that you could it do to a, stop it, them. It was a clock against Rai for sure. For sure. Um, it, it is important to note that this card has the element bonus. So when you're that you know, basic spirit, mm -hmm. and you're going into your level one, if you banish this, you're not going to get that enlightenment counter. Which is the which big is bummer. Very, no, I'm very glad it doesn't have that. Cause <laughs> well, yeah, 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 I mean, same, but it's the bummer for you Rye players out there that yeah, are just yeah. degenerates. You know, it's so. still it's still good, because, you know, if you're playing the theme deck Rye, you're still going to want the arcane cards banished, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of times you're just trying to get arcane cards in the banished one. So, you know, like, it, it's not like it's bad if it gets banished before you are level three. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can definitely get that, like, kind of extra push if you're you know using a radical bolt mm -hmm. banishing cards that way and stuff like that getting those alignment counters while also doing those effects um but you know it is also like how many arcane cards can you really fit in a ride deck right like it's already pretty tight on space mm -hmm. i feel like and this is maybe a side deck card if you're worried about a tall thing that doesn't have spell shroud but we're also seeing a lot more like prevent spell attack or spell damage sure so. i think and i think you know we haven't talked a lot about what it actually does right it was just like kill yeah. an ally yeah with how many enlightened counters you have it you know i think we're gonna see a lot more of those mid-range kind of beefy allies than we've seen in the past yeah and with that you know it is nice but honestly at that point like why aren't we just sweeping the board probably yeah i, I think that's my big deal with yeah. it i think that's it's going to be outed too often mm -hmm. to like actually use its effect for and you know like they don't really have the luxury of space i think for that banish to get an alignment counter effect so yeah. I don't know. It, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. It could be way better of a card than we're thinking. Yeah, who knows? Maybe it's an absolute four of include yeah. no matter what. But I feel like a lot of times people are going to be like, man, this is a really strong card. I wish I had space for it. Sure. You know? Yep. So we have Voltic Spear up next, which is uh, the only other arcane spell, we're, or card, I should say. We're only getting two in this set, which is a two-cost action mage spell. Deal three damage to target unit. If that unit is an ally, deal five damage to it instead. Its class bonus is Banish Voltic Spear from your graveyard. The next Arcane Element spell card you activate this turn will cost one less to activate. So um, I gave this a four. Yeah, I uh, I think I, yep, I, I also gave it a four. Yeah. And first off, I want to say I'm so glad there's only two new Arcane spells because <laughs> uh, Arcane Rye is already, I, I one of the first things I did in this game when I started playing was I picked up that deck. Yeah, yeah. And we had some really fun games, and I was like, this is dumb. How yeah. is there a deck that is doing this in set one? That was such a memorable game, too. <laughs> Just because, like, it was Fire Lorraine versus Arcane Rye, yep. and I didn't know what Spell Shield Arcane was yet, so mm -hmm. I did a huge Rending Flames for, mm -hmm. like, 24, I think. Yep. And Terry just goes... Spell shield, and I pick it up and read it, and I just start <laughs> laughing uncontrollably because I'm just like, all right, well, I guess that's game. Like, yeah. Um, and that's what I really like about GA. You can kind of have those really cool interactions. No, totally. But, um, it, it is an awesome game overall. Yeah. The gameplay is great. I just think that 
this deck particular feels like a deck that has been crafted over like six, seven sets. Yeah. And it's first set. So yeah. um, it's going to be interesting to see as we see more and more arcane cards. They're going to have to be so careful. Yeah. Because that deck is going to be a contender, I think, for until something gets banned, like Reckless Conversion or something like that. Yeah. If that happens, I think things will change. But if it doesn't happen, then we're in a situation where every single set from here on yeah. Every arcane card could potentially break the deck yeah. and make it absolute tier zero. For sure. I think even if they banish, or not banish, if they ban <laughs> uh, Reckless Conversion and, you know, Rai gets kind of a slower gameplay, mm -hmm. I think this fits in really well because it's kind of that, like, chip damage, like, sure. take three to the face. If your board is a problem, and I'm going to clear something instead. Yeah. And then you get to banish it from your graveyard by its own effect mm -hmm. and start pumping up those levels again. We don't really see that on a lot of arcane cards. No. It's like, play it for an effect and also put it in the banish, right? Yeah. Like this is basically its first of its kind. And what's really cool in something like a water ride deck, right? You could even be milling these off with tide miners and sure. stuff and then be using things like uh, raccoons to like, or uh, raccoons to like banish, you know, two arcane sites in your graveyard mm -hmm. and then also banish these, make your kill spells cheaper. And then now, you know, like you've just gained a massive amount of levels in one turn and stuff. You totally. Know? So I really see a lot of synergy with that too. I think this is a card that you'll be able to fit more into your deck than, um, the shock therapy totally you know? that we're gonna see a lot of uh of the sphere so yeah. um the next one is kind of a really cool one-two punch it's a new kind of end game uh but let's jump right into it it's crux right we're moving to crux which is probably kind of a crowd favorite everybody loves lorraine yeah um and here she is in this beautiful beautiful artwork by the way yeah, on this yeah. card Good if you get a chance sure. check it out um but anyway it's a slow action it's a 12 cost yeah. Um, it does have efficiency, which means basically for your level, you're going to pay one less. So if we were level four, we're going to play eight. We're going to yeah. pay eight instead of 12. So, um, but what this card does is uh, this card costs one less to activate for each regalia weapon card in your banishment. So we can kind of get that double discount, which yeah. is kind of cool. Um, and then, but what it actually does and what we care about is it puts a card named the Majestic Spirit from your material deck or banishment onto the field. Yeah. And I know that we weren't going to talk about that card next, but I think we honestly should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I think this card, they kind of need to be talked together. Right, right. So uh, I'm just going to... Do you, do you want to read what the Majestic Spirit does? Sure. So yeah. Majestic Spirit is a 12 cost as well. Um, also Crux, of course. Regalia Ally, Mage, Beast, Avatar, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Intercept, True Sight, and Vigor champions you control have spell shroud so it's not protecting itself but it is protecting your champion and then it's also protecting your champion because if another crux element unit you control would take damage prevent half of that damage rounded up and it's a 410 so if you have you know ghost of pendragon out for mm -hmm. health they try to sweep for five now now it's staying alive right mm -hmm. Um, and obviously a little bit more important is if they're trying to do attack damage into your champion mm -hmm. and your crux because you're playing the Majestic Experiment, you know, you're taking half that damage. Totally. And you're also really protected against Rai because you have that Spell Shroud. So right. very strong. I mean, you read this card and this is like one of the strongest cards in the game, right? Totally. And I, I think that, um, I mean, stat wise, obviously it's a 12 cost. If you look at the cost, you're like, what the heck? But, yeah, yeah. but you're not paying that 12. Right. You're never going to be paying that 12. Right. So um, the big thing is, is... It is a very, I mean, four damage a hit is a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So we know in this game, four damage from an attack stat, like you're going to die quickly if you're yeah. going to hit for four every turn. If it's sticking on the board. Exactly. Yeah. And so you get this very offensive card with that four damage. Um, but at the same time, it has Vigor, so you're always defensive with it yeah. as well. And it so, has defensive abilities. Exactly. It. It's, yeah. such, it's such a defensive card. I think that, and what I wrote about is, so we didn't say our stars. Yeah. I, I think that if we're being honest, this card it probably fits into the five star for me. I didn't give it five stars, but I think this is, kind of, I don't think it's going to change how people play, but it is going to be a meta defining card. Yeah. I yeah. think that every Merlin deck, at least early on, um, is going to have this one, two punch combo in it because why wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, even if you only play two of the uh, in, Incarnate Majesties, like you're going to have the Majestic Spirit in your, in your material deck yeah. because you're going to get to a certain point. Why not 
put a... I mean, if you get late enough in the game with a warrior mage like Merlin, your level gets high enough. Because, I mean, you can just cast this card for free for super free late game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you get to that point, you're literally just putting a 410 with an absolute broken build through it out for free. Especially because in Merlin specifically, you're getting that class bonus efficiency mm -hmm. with the weapon reduction as well. So, because you're, you're probably going to be bringing out weapons with uh, warrior type and all that stuff. So, 100%. Yeah, I mean... The fact that it gets it from material deck or banishment is maybe a reason to play three of these, totally. right? four even, yeah. um, because you can get to a point of the game where you know this is a low cost relatively for you to bring out, and it's a fairly hard thing to deal with. So yeah. I don't necessarily think that you know one of the strongest decks of the formats is going to be something built around this, mm -hmm. but I think it's more of like if you can just kind of put this in your deck as a very small side engine mm -hmm. that you can get to at some point in the game where it's not really costing you that much to bring out. It's kind of like a you bring it out if they have an answer for it, okay, that's fine. You're doing something else anyways mm -hmm. as your main win con, but if they don't have an answer for it then GG, right? Totally. Like it's it's pretty strong. So I did give this uh, Incarnate Majesty and Majestic Spirit both a four each. Cause, gotcha. I mean, you kind of do have to rate them together. Almost. And and that's yeah. I gave them four stars yeah, person. Yeah. But I think I could see the five star rating if you go down into this description and read how we explain it. You at least early on you are going to see it. I think that it's a card that. Um, people are going to be really excited about because yeah. it's a big ally, but I don't know how good it will actually be. Yeah. Like you said, in, in a Merlin deck that knows it's going to be going really late, which we're going to talk about her next, yeah. um, maybe in that world, it's just an auto-include because why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? So let's just jump right into Merlin's because we just talked about her a ton and we haven't even introduced her yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so welcome the new level three champion. Yeah. Everybody's really excited about, everyone's been talking about. The um, only champion in the whole set, which is crazy. And our yeah. first super rare champion. Yeah, which is actually insane. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's going to be... We're not going to see this in every pack we open. It's yeah. not going to be like, you know, in the past where, you know, every box you're getting. That's not guaranteed here. So um, pre-order your Merlins. <laughs> so you make <laughs> yeah. sure if you want to try her out. This could be one of the most expensive SRs. Because, yes, you only need one of them. Mm -hmm. But... A lot of people are going to be wanting to hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. So I'm going to read right into her. So as you said, she's level three champ, uh, mage warrior human. Uh, she has 28 health. She's got that warrior beefiness, which yeah. is good to see, uh, especially for mage, which has been one of the squishier classes. Yeah. Um, she does have Merlin lineage. So unlike a level two Merlin, where you can just like go into Merlin from yeah. anything, you have to go from level two Merlin into level three Merlin. Um, at the beginning of your recollection phase, put a level counter on Merlin. So she just levels up at the beginning of your recollection. Then, if there's an even amount of level counters on Merlin, draw a card, and Merlin's attacks get plus two attack until end of turn. Yeah. Um, so before we dive into this, I do something that you confirmed, and I wanted to just get it out there right away. <laughs> Um, talk to me a little bit about leveling up from level two Merlin to this Merlin and not being able to bring the ability through. Yeah, so like Rai, for example, level two has mm -hmm. an inherited effect that mm -hmm. when you cast your first mage spell counter, you, on each turn you get an enlightenment counter. Mm -hmm. um, so even when you go into level three Rai, you're still going to get that effect. It is not the case for level two Merlin, um, Merlin Memory Thief. Mm -hmm. So that's a tap effect. You get to banish a card with floating memory, and if you do, uh, put a level counter on it. And mm -hmm. you can do that from your opponent too. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but that does not say inherited effect. So once you go into your level three Merlin, you do lose that ability, sure. which is really interesting because level three Merlin is very strong. You mm -hmm. have a reason to want to go into her and yeah. it's six extra health. That's a big deal too. Totally. But you might also kind of want to stick around at that level two stage where you're interrupting your opponent by, you know, gaining level counters yourself, but also getting, eating up their floating memory. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see a really interesting like dynamic there of like, sure. when do you go into Merlin level three? Cause Level three, you know, it says at the beginning of your recollection phase. So that means you materialize Merlin level three in your materialization phase. You immediately move to a recollection mm -hmm. phase. You immediately go up a level already, right? Yeah. That's crazy because if you're doing this kind of like control stun deck with her, you're going to be able to do Incarnate Majesty pretty quickly, yeah. right? For like really, really cheap, yeah. especially if you've already had a turn or two on Merlin level two, mm -hmm. where you're again getting those level counters there too. So yeah. by the time you actually bring out Merlin three, you might be five, six uh, levels already just by your Merlin's effect, which sure. is wild. Yeah, no, this this card is is pretty bonkers. It gets the plus yeah. two attack every time that you actually get that even number on your yeah. level. I mean, we've seen how strong that is, right? Yeah. You, you have to play around the Lorraine level two 
phase right now because mm -hmm. of that plus two attack, giving all those sweeps and rending flames and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Plus two attack on a champion is no no small feat. No. No, it is not. And I think it is important to to also throw it out there. And I think this is kind of nice that it has the warrior uh, subtyping as well is mm -hmm. because you don't just get to attack. And yeah. that's something that's important yeah. if you're a newer player checking out these videos. You have to have a way to attack, whether that be right. an attack spell or... Um, like a like like a attack. It's not a spell, I guess, but you know what I mean. Like a, an attack a sword. card or a sword on exactly. the field and stuff. Yeah. So which is uh, like you're probably going to be wanting to play swords because of all the class bonuses, totally. just being a warrior, and then also yeah, that incarnate majesty getting that uh, down as well. So and yeah, I mean you're talking about late game. You know, constantly having that threat of like, am I going to hit you with a seven attack flame sweep yeah. each turn? Right. Yeah. Like that's pretty crazy. So. And it is, it is only when it's an even amount of level counters, but we mm -hmm. have seen a norm card that just puts a level counter on totally. your champion. So you could like get to an even amount of level counters, get Merlin's effect, and then later in that turn, put another level counter on her. So then that way, in the, in the, in the, when, it, when that effect would go to trigger again, it'll be even again. Right, so you just guarantee it. We already have a way to basically like almost nonstop loop this effect already, mm -hmm. which is really crazy. Yeah, no, she's... She's crazy strong. Yeah. Um, she's the new hotness. That's what I wrote in my stuff. Like, everyone's <laughs> going to be trying to play her. Absolute yeah. five-star rating. And she has two signatures in the upcoming set. I that, mean, we're, we're mainly talking about the cards, effects, and stuff. Sure. But they, they From the collector cool. side, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, get your so uh, wallet out. We have our final Crux card, which uh, Crux, I think, got the most cards. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, Arcane got two, Crux got four, and then Luxum and Terra got three. Yep. And it's funny because, like, the three cards that we just talked about, Merlin, Incarnate Majesty, and the Majestic Spirit, they all kind of like really, like you kind of almost have to talk about all three of them at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. And this is kind of like the outlier, I feel like. So it's called Slay the King. It's a two-cost crux, uh, two crux card, attack warrior sword, class bonus on attack. You may banish a card from your material deck. If you do, Slay the King gains. On kill, you may play the banished card. Mm -hmm. And it's a four attack sword, or attack card mm -hmm. um which is really high uh normally you know they're they're kind of about that two to three range mm -hmm. i feel like with bonus effects so i did only give this a three though i as well gave it a three and that yeah. is mostly because it's not stated on here but when it says you may play the banished card that doesn't mean that you get to cheat it into play yeah yeah you still are required to pay its cost so you can't just put majestic spirits <laughs> into play for free be pretty crazy, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's important to remember yeah um honestly it's cool I, you get to cheat out some things, so may, th I, there's probably some really cool stuff you can do with yeah. that. I haven't dug into this particularly, but at the same time, coming from somebody who plays a lot of Luxem Xander, playing a big, big package of th uh, level three element cards, yeah. like Crux, whatever else, um, it can be kind of a double-edged sword. You have all yeah. these really powerful cards and do these really powerful things. Like, at the end of the day, this is a four attack for two, which is, it's above That's the average. That's super strong. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it adds a really cool effect if you yeah. decide to go into an ally, right? Or, yeah. you know, whatever you decide to do with it. Um, but I don't think that it's going to be a card that we're going to see in every single deck that goes to Crux at yeah. level three. I think like, you know, maybe water is gonna utilize this more or something because mm -hmm. they don't have as strong of attack cards and sure. stuff. Like fire, I don't think is gonna touch this really at all because they mm -hmm. already have their super strong devastating blows mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, right? But I think maybe water and maybe so uh, wind is gonna use this because like you said, that two cost four attack, mm -hmm. that's pretty high, right? Yeah. But you know, to bring that inconsistency mm -hmm. of more third advanced or third element cards into the deck and stuff, that, that starts to make it a little bit more sketchy. And yeah, I mean that, that uh, effect is fairly easy for your opponent to play around. Mm -hmm. They might dump two cards from their hand or something to prevent you from killing an ally, and then you're losing that tempo, you're banishing a card. Because um, the thing is, is that you have to banish it on attack, so mm -hmm. before your opponent shows what they're going to do. So you're going to banish something from your material deck, and then your opponent stops it, and now you've permanently lost that card. Mm -hmm. Also, this is a crux card, so like it's not like you can level up your champion faster or something like that. No. In like a lot of your targets that you're already going to want to be grabbing, like Grail and Ring and all of those kind of cards, like you might you might just not really have a target for this, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think the effect's definitely pretty inconsistent. But um, yeah, it, it, as far as a, an advanced element card. These cards will all be inherently stronger sure. because you can't play them until later in the game. Mm -hmm. But they all come with the drawback of like you really just can't fill up your deck with them. So sure. that's kind of where this lies for me. Yeah. 
And I think after that, there's not too much more to say about yeah. that. And we'll move from Crux right on over to the Luxem cards. I'm going to let you read just all the Luxem cards because <laughs> this is this is your uh, your class. Sure, sure, yeah. I, I mean, I do I do love Luxem. So um, this first one we're going to jump into is the keyword of the set, right? So we've yeah. got Fractured Crown, the zero-cost regalia item warrior artifact. It has Champion Link, which is this object enters the field linked to target champion. If the link is broken, sacrifice this object. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Link Champion's first attack each turn gets plus two um, to their attack stat. And then class bonus, which is a warrior, that champion also gets two health for each unique ally card in your graveyard. Um, so Fractured Crown, I gave, I gave it a two. I gave it a three. Okay. So I gave it a two because what it does is inherently incredibly strong. Yeah. But... I think that it's going to be very fringe. I don't think you're going to see it in a lot of decks. I don't think every Luxem deck is going to be utilizing it. I mean, granted, we only have one way currently to get into a Luxem yeah. element and have the warrior, warrior class, class bonus, bonus, and that's by Triscuit. Yeah. And so Triscuit, one of the coolest cards in the game. Yeah. Like yeah. hands down, super cool. It gives you, it lets you use fire, water, wind elements. Um, and then when it enters, it basically just banishes your lineage, what you have, and she takes yeah. over. And I believe she's a 212. 212, yeah. Yeah. So pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, great card. Gives you access to all elements. But in order to get to it, you have to already level up all the way into level three. Yeah. Then you have to use that Luxem card to cast Triscuit. Yeah. I, and and so it's, it is a tall task to get Triscuit out quickly. For sure. Um, granted... Maybe you don't have to. Yeah. And this card would be something that really beefs her up. Yeah. So if you do get, to, if you do find a way to get her out quicker, and you find a way to get her um, leveled up, and you, and we're playing a deck that, let's say we are going to utilize the class bonus, right? So we're going to have a few unique allies in there because all it takes. There's a lot of really strong there unique are. allies too. There yeah. are, and it only takes you know four in yeah. your graveyard, and I don't believe like it doesn't say. Um, I think it's each unique yeah, ally. You can have four Gildas. Exactly. You're going to get eight health. You exactly. don't have to have four different ones. For sure. Right? Yeah. So that, which is great. So you yeah. don't have to have different ones. So just, you can turn that Triscuit into a normal sized, yeah. you know, champ, yeah. which is, which is, <laughs> I mean, Triscuit with 26 health, 28 health is terrifying. Right. Because you can kind of wait to do that until you've already take, f taken 15 damage on mm -hmm. your Xander or something, mm -hmm. right? But thing is Luxem already has like kind of that stabilizing point mm -hmm. right now with Luxem site and all that stuff so I'm not really sure if Vi like it's really good enough to do this combo um one thing that is cool that you can do with this card is you can use quick silver quick silver grail to banish the crown early mm -hmm. and then wait until you are that Luxem element and um go into your Xander level three and then immediately go into the mm -hmm. crown or go into Xander level three do the Triscuit all that stuff and then immediately have that that buff health so that you're not like waiting a turn on 12 health sure. right because 12 health is not impossible to do in one turn right mm -hmm. so i mean there, there's definitely some cool interactions but it all kind of like when i when i look at it all and consider all the variables like kind of just seems more of like a casual kind of thing sure and you know you don't have to i mean we spent almost all of our time talking about triscuit mm -hmm. you can just use this with xander because totally. you know they have thousands of refractions which is mm -hmm. basically a unending attack spell in your hand like you, you can cast it and then just get it back and then like use it next turn and you know that can that can turn into quite a little combo there so sure you know and this is just sitting in your material deck for zero it's not like it cost one or two or something like that to bring out so i could see this card being played um but it's it's just a little bit of like a tiny supplemental card I sure think, you know and it goes back to kind of what i was saying in my video with isaac where there's so much gas in this set yeah. There's so much stuff from first set and second set that we want in our material decks. Yeah. It's kind of tough. I think that you're not going to be utilizing this in a deck unless you're kind of building around it. And Xander already kind of has that like light user salt and Luxem site build, right? Exactly. Like, you don't really need to like supplement that with this card. No. So that that is, yeah, that's a very good point. So with that being said, we're going to move on to the next one, which is Illuminate Secrets, which is an assassin mage spell. It's fast. It costs two. Um, deal an amount of damage to target unit equal to its owner's influence minus your influence. And a player's influence, and we've talked about a little bit, but I'm going to say it again, is equal to the total amount of cards in their hand and memory. So this card's pretty interesting. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, so I rated it a three. Okay. I gave it a two. Yeah. It's, again, 
all advanced element cards are going to read really powerful mm -hmm. because that's what they're supposed to be. But where are you finding the space for this in a Luxem deck, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know. Trust me. I, yeah. I, I, I already feel like a lot of times when I'm playing Xander that I have too much Luxem cards in my yeah, deck. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, man, uh, how am I going to fit? Granted, when you do... So to defend this card, mm -hmm. which I gave it a two. So... But if I am going to defend it in some way, it's that when you do finally get in a lot of Xander decks, when you get to level three, you do have very few cards in hand. Yeah. Which, right. unless you're absolutely just rolling your opponent, obviously you're you're set up, you're in a great yeah, spot. Yeah, but yeah. in a lot of situations, especially in Fire Luxem Xander, yes. you're down to two, three cards. Yeah. And in that situation, then this is kind of cool because if you did have this, Boom, you got this big blast. But at the same time, every time you hit it, we are trying to stabilize. So it does get a little a little rough in that in that aspect. Right. And I think that's a I think it's good that you touched on like fire Luxem Xander mm -hmm. instead of like yeah, like water control sure. with like light weavers and all that stuff. Because I think that is maybe where this card sees its strength, right? Because you're you're fire, so you're just gonna be trying to play everything and like get your influence down. Mm -hmm deal a bunch of damage and stuff. And this is kind of that like, well, here's seven more damage to the face, mm -hmm. right? Which probably won't get that high. Sure. But um, you might just run this instead of Light Weavers and stuff. You might mm -hmm. go, instead of the show memory Xander, you might just go the Stealth and Spell Shroud Xander mm -hmm. that just gives you that free turn that you can like just take another turn to try to kill them and everything. And then you're doing this kind of stuff. So we might see a kind of Luxem deck where this is like one of the only Luxem cards you run. But oh, like right. in what are the strong decks right now, mm -hmm. like. I mean, and Fire Luxem Xander is not necessarily a bad deck right no, now, but no, no. It's, it's using the other package. Totally. Know? Yeah. And, and I think that you're you're hitting a nail on the head. Um, one thing to consider um, is all of the fractals. If you did play a deck that was based around yeah. them, that is going to bring your influence down, but For still sure. give you that resource. So we are. I think as as we get more sets, you're going to see more and more influence based cards yeah. and and this probably gets a lot stronger the issue is is that if influence is really strong in the meta then people are just going to play around it they're going to play their own fractals they're going to like do their own kind of strategies so like you know i think i think if this deck starts to show a lot of strength mm -hmm. then people will adapt the meta quickly around it totally. right so like it's kind of like maybe uh maybe it sneaks a win here and there at a big mm -hmm. event but i'm not sure sure um now we're going to talk the last one big daddy uh you know a card that i'm really excited about uh, and that is Uther, Illustrious King. And that is a 4-4 four, for four, 4 in the Luxem element. He's a unique ally with Warrior Human. He has Intercept and Vigor. Uh, on Enter, you may rest Uther. When you do, banish another target non-champion object. Yeah. And then on Leave, return the banished object to the field under its owner's control rested. Wow. That's a card. It's a lot of text. It's a lot of text. Yeah. And and usually a lot of text usually brings a powerful card to the table. Yeah. Um, I gave Uther to give him my star. I think that he is a five star. Yeah. Um, five star for sure. He is incredibly well statted. Yeah. Very strong. Um, he has offense and defense. He has vigor, so you can attack with him for four, which we talked about a little bit ago. Yeah. How strong that is, how quickly that ends the game. Yeah. Attack for four. Untap at the end of your turn, he's ready to play defense. And then on top of that, his ability is kind of insane. Yeah. I mean, if your opponent has like two allies on the board that are really giving you an issue, mm -hmm. you can play this card, banish one of them that maybe it's like a five or six cost or health ally that you can't really deal with, banish that one, and then swing into their like four health ally, clear that off. And then this this card just like basically took two, care of two problems in mm -hmm. one, and it's providing you that extra defense on the next turn as well. Totally. And and non champ non champion object. Now that's a that's a phrase we don't hear. About. Uh, uh yeah yeah. So right, you can't you can't actually attack and banish a non champion yeah. object. Right right. So you'd only clear one, but you're still clearing maybe the really hard to clear ten health guy, and mm -hmm. then right restanding for that intercept figure. Mm -hmm. So very strong card and yeah this can deal with domains not a lot of cards can deal with them that luxem, was what, yeah yeah luxem does have excalibur right mm -hmm. now which is like i think maybe the only card that deals with domains in doa uh at least the only relevant one sure. for sure um so luxem like kind of didn't need it they already had a way to deal with it it'd be really interesting to see like if terra got that sure, or something sure. like that right but like luxem having a second one is still good right yeah. like so it is it is definitely very strong 
Yeah, no, it's... I mean, when he hits, what I wrote in, in my notes is basically... When this card hits, an, an absolute staple in Luxem control mid-range lists, and when he hits, the game is ending soon. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if you're in a situation where he's hitting and you are stabilized, he is going to do some work, and he's going to do it yeah. quickly. And being able to answer anything... Yeah, that's it, crazy strong. We, we don't really have a lot of that. Yeah. So that is very, very strong. And now you let me do Luxem. I'm going to let you do Terra since sure. you're the... Uh, since you're <laughs> <laughs> You're the tamer guy, so let's do that. All right, so we're going to start off with uh, one cost avatar of Gaia. This is our first Terra card. It's a unique ally tamer avatar. So ally link with class bonus preserve. Linked ally has taunt and loses pride, and it's a zero two. So really interesting card. I did rate this a three. Yeah, I uh, I actually gave it a four. Really? And uh, and you know I don't really know why, if I'm being <laughs> honest. So I mean like. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's some you know giving something taunt and losing pride right mm -hmm. really big things there but you definitely have to kind of build your deck around it mm -hmm. like this isn't gonna go in every single no. uh, tamer deck right um you know i feel like you're not gonna really like pride, pride is so so strange really it, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a very unique element because like you're not gonna run this in a deck that doesn't have another way to get to that pride right mm -hmm. and you're playing it when you're terra so like I feel like losing that pride might not be as beneficial as it kind of looks like it is, sure. right? Because like, um, so I don't know. And and the fact is that it's 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 linked, right? If they just kill this for two with a spell damage or something, then it's the gone. link's broken. And there's no, you know, like you get you the do preserve, preserve it, which is you know, I mean, we've seen crawl, right? Mm -hmm. Has well, I, we haven't seen crawl yet, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we have seen cards that do synergize with preserve, so. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting card. It's really hard for me to rate Terra cards in general mm -hmm. because Sylvie does struggle to get to that stage already. So I mm -hmm. kind of feel like Terra cards, and this obviously could change in this set, but like Terra cards really have to be doing something quick mm -hmm. and like really good to kind of turn that game around. Because I feel like once you're at that Terra state right now, you're losing the game. Sure. And that could change in this set. Totally. And I think it will. But yeah. I think that that card and what I wrote about was where it could be incredibly strong is I envision, I guess I kind of see this, more mid-rangey, go tall Sylvie deck that goes kind of more into Terra. And it's it's got, instead of being more like beat down, go wide yeah. like Alan, it's more like, hey, I'm gonna stick a big threat yeah. and I'm gonna kill you with it. Yeah. And I think of Wind and I think of the Silverback. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he, just thinking of him and being able to utilize this, yeah. it, it's, it's cool, but that's, and you know what? You and I talked about this earlier. It, in this game, there tends to be so many yeah. two card combos it's odd. And it's not like any other game I've ever played. Yeah. And so it, it kind of, it's funny because this game kind of took one of the biggest issues of most games, which was resource management, right? Like in, in Magic the Gathering, you have to spend a third of your deck at least is, right. is going to be built literally just to cast the cards my in your least, deck. My least favorite part about that game. Sure. Yeah. Whereas this, every card you draw is a resource, right? Yeah. And so with that being said, I forgot the point I was going to make. <laughs> it's Tarot cards are hard to judge because yeah. <laughs> Sylvie is so weak right now. Sure. It's it's hard to really say, like, is playing this, is putting a Tarot card in your deck worth it? Mm -hmm. Because right now, like, I, I also feel like in DOA, we got so much Terra support for some mm -hmm. reason. Like, I feel like Norm and Element weren't really there, right? Yeah. Like, But then Terra had tons of, like, really powerful cards, but, like, you just really couldn't use them because you wouldn't get to that stage, right? Yeah. And I feel like we kind of got the opposite in this set. It's like there's some strong Terra cards, don't get True. me wrong, but it, like I feel like we got so much before Terra support, yeah. right? So like it's just I think I think just Tamer in general is a really hard card to speculate on. Sure, you know. And you know what? I want to say that uh, I did play Terra in limited at pre-release, and yeah. I finished very well with yeah. uh, <laughs> Terra Sylvie. So yeah, yeah. with just the Artificer as like my end game, pretty much. Yeah. But anyway, sorry, off topic, ADHD. Uh, <laughs> go on with the next card. Uh, so we have Covenant of Thorns, which is a one cost Terra regalia item, Tamer accessory. Class bonus, this card costs one less to materialize, which is interesting because we don't have uh, a Terra non-Tamer champion yet, but that could come up one day. Um, so th this essentially reads zero for the time being. Uh, ally link, if damage would be dealt to your champion, that damage is dealt to linked ally instead, which it's kind of almost similar to Avatar of Gaia, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is going to protect you. It's a regalia item, so you know you're gonna have like a, a chance to get it. It's gonna be in your hand, basically. You're gonna have access to it. 
Um, and yeah, in that go tall strategy where you're getting out that eight, 10, 12, whatever mm -hmm. health ally that you've been buffing and stuff, like this is a fantastic defensive option. Mm -hmm. um, so I did give this a three though. Yeah, I gave it a three as well. Yeah. Um, I said, as it stands, this regalia is decent uh, to help you live by forcing your opponent to kind of kill whatever it's on, um, I, obviously. Uh, but what the big thing I said about it is this card absolutely screams, break me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, break the game. Like, yeah. And I can totally see why. Yeah, so... I have like a little fun thing that I want to try and I'm sure it's going to be inconsistent. So you you, you get your blue slime or your mm -hmm. giant tortoise or whatever. So like 10 health, something really big. You link this to that that ally and then, you know, you can give it like hopefully, you know, extra health and all that kind of stuff because you don't really have a way to like do that to your champion. You just have like restore and stuff, mm -hmm. right? But like you have a way to give extra health uh, and you also have give bath and mm -hmm. stuff like that, right? So like, you know, you get your blue slime up to 12 health or giant tortoise or something like that. Then they deal nine damage to it or whatever with something, and then you just get bath, rewipe it, and then now you basically just restored nine because yeah. the damage didn't go to your champion, right? So like, there's definitely some cute things that you can do with this card, yeah. and like, it's it's got potential. But regalia, like, I feel like regalia is not hard to interact with, and sure. allies aren't that hard to interact with either no. right now. You know, so it's like, I feel like yeah, like you said, this card screams break me, but it also says like. This is kind of a weak synergy. You yeah. know, like, I don't know. Oh, I I, I don't think it's going to be doing anything crazy. I yeah. think that there's going to be some really cheeky combo that happens, like, a few sets in that somebody realizes, oh, crap, if I put this here and attach to this ally with yeah. this other card, it's, like, a very niche combo. But if you get yeah. it, it, like, basically enters a loop where you can't lose the game. Right. And, like, we, <laughs> we have, like, some small synergies, like, you know, actually pairing this with the blue slime it's forcing them to hit that blue slime mm -hmm. instead of your champion, mm -hmm. right? So they may just they may just not attack because if they can't kill that blue slime, they don't want to start giving it buff counters mm -hmm. by doing damage. Totally. So and also like I think it's important to note like this is another it's just damage, not mm -hmm. just attack damage. So this is another way for Tamer to have an out against Rise spell damage, yeah. and they already have boots, they already mm -hmm. have all that kind of stuff. Like you know, it, it is going to be interesting to see that matchup and how that goes. I mean, if you attach this to Morgan, Rai can't kill you. So. Can you attach it to a non-animal or beast? Yeah, I believe it's just ally. Ally link. Yeah. So you could put it on, and then they can't hit you um, with spells? Uh, <laughs> well, so they would target they would target the champion, mm -hmm. and then that damage would be dealt to the ally. So I don't and know then, if... And then, but, that, wait, but the damage is still... Oh, actually, I wonder how that would work, because it's... Oh, it's all non-attack damage. That would Morgan. be dealt to Morgan. So it might work. I, I <laughs> it's funny because before we even got onto this one, I was thinking in my head, like, this card is gonna make some like rulings just hard to understand because what happens, yeah, if your um if your ally has spell shroud or something, mm -hmm. right? Like, does that damage go through? I don't know. Oh, like, yeah. Does it just disappear? <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're gonna have to do a video, like a rulings video, and like three of the five Covenant rulings are gonna doors. be just on this card. Yeah. So we'll we'll figure those out eventually. But yeah. interesting card for sure. Let's yeah. go ahead and jump into the last card of the FTC set. So it's been a blast to record these. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the last one that we're gonna talk about. So Honestly, it, everybody's probably been waiting for this one. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we have uh, five cost. Crawl Stone Scale Tyrant, which Whew. the signature looks so good, by the way. Oh, really, dude. Really cool Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, unique ally, Tamer Beast Dragon. As an additional cost to activate this card, banish two preserved cards from your material deck. And it has a lot of keywords. Intercept, Spell Shroud, True Sight, and Vigor. Uh, its class bonuses on attack reveal the top two cards of your deck and put them into your material deck preserved. And it's a 6-8. So we should mm -hmm. talk about preserved real quick. Preserved means that if they're in your material deck, you can add them to hand instead of materializing for that turn. Uh, the cool thing is, is that I think that skips interaction on your materialize step because I think you can only respond to something being materialized. I could be wrong about that. Maybe they can also do it with pres uh, preservation. But um, yeah, I mean, basically you get to, on your next turn, pick from your top two cards to draw essentially mm -hmm. right and like if they're bad you just leave them in there yeah and then maybe they're useful later in the game and sure. then now all of a sudden you have this morgan that you wanted later that you can now just brag like it's it's a very very interesting i like that mechanic mm -hmm. and being that you have to activate it by banishing two preserved cards in addition to its cost means that you're probably not going dungeon guide into level three sylvie crawl right mm -hmm. like it, you kind of have to like 
you got to do a couple terasites or something else that's going to get preserved because there's not too many cards that have preserve on it so it's kind of a little bit of a situational card but um i'll go ahead and give it my rating i gave it a four i gave it a five really okay and but you know i did not know a lot about sylvie like personally sure before okay. like when i actually did these ratings initially yeah, yeah um to me it really feels like an absolute game ending mid-range card um it has obviously so many keywords to it it's yeah. very sticky it's yeah. huge it's like, it's really hard i mean you're gonna have to hit this with a skill because mm -hmm. it has spell shroud so yep. we do see um immolation trap uh I can't remember the other two, but basically fire, water, and... Oh, yeah, Immolation Trap, Fishing Accident, and Arrow Trap. Those are uh, three different element classes, so basically everyone gets access to one of these cards that mm -hmm. are skills that will essentially destroy a, an ally. So mm -hmm. there are ways to deal with this card, mm -hmm. but it is, like you said, sticky, right? Yeah. Like um, I know some of them are class bonuses, too, so it's not like every single deck that you play against is going to have an easy answer to crawl. Yeah, no, it's... It's a tough card to deal with, and I think that um, it is a very... I talked a little bit about that Go Big Sylvie deck, kind yeah, of mid-rangey, yeah. big creatures, stompy. Hopefully, like, if we find a way ever to ramp, I think Sylvie would be kind of like that in Magic. It's like that red-green ramp yeah, stompy yeah, deck, yeah, right? Where yeah. you're just playing big beaters and winning the game. Yeah. This is definitely that. We just haven't seen allies like this. Yeah. You know, and there's a couple big ones in the set, but this one particularly... That six attack stat, just base, plus with intercept, spell shroud, true sight, vigor. Yeah. It's it's attacking, it's defending, it's hard to kill, like you said. Uh, plus, it's helping you fix your hand, yeah. which, which is pretty strong. Yeah, I think there's something that I really like about this is that it's kind of almost giving Sylvie's Earth Tune a bigger part in the meta, I think. Because mm. beforehand, you had the Sylvie Love by All theme deck one that... All your stuff gave, uh, you know, um, intercept. All your animals gained intercept mm -hmm. and, or be animals and beasts, I think, gained intercept and plus one, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, definitely needed right now because you don't really have like good payoffs for like a, a Sylvie's Earth Tune where you're gonna get an animal or beast. Like, there's some strong ones, but not like nothing like crawl and set mm -hmm. one, right? And and because it because of the nature of how Sylvie's played right now, you really just needed that. Like, okay, I got to Sylvie hit my allies instead of me right now because like yeah. i don't i don't have a lot of defensiveness right so it, it's interesting because crawl could be like you only run this yeah. as your terra beast animal thing so like that way when you go into your earth tune you essentially have a tutor out for crawl yeah you know that you're gonna hit it because it's the only target for her effect and also like you could even run one crawl right yeah. Because it doesn't put all the cards that you searched into the grave, it just shuffles them on the bottom of the deck. You don't have to worry about like, right. oh crap, my crawl was my last card right. and I'm going to lose the game, right? So I think that's a really cool thing that like maybe some people aren't going to think of right away. Is like maybe you go Earth's Tomb with just one of this and that's that's a really consistent combo oh, yeah. right there. Um, and it's essentially reading, you know, tutor a card when you go into your level three. That's a mm -hmm. very strong effect. Totally. You, know? you get to add a card to hand. So yeah. it's, it's drawing, right? Yeah. And we are also drawing our end game bomb. It's map. Yeah. You know, like it's literally it's, map. It's it's, yeah. it's 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 definitely interesting. Um and it's cool because like, you know, Sylvie's Earth Tune was a signature in first edition and like mm. when I pulled one, I was like, Oh, this is really awesome, but I'm probably never gonna play it because sure. like love vials are so much better. So it's just nice to already kind of see those um a reason to play this card, you know. Man, that signature looks sweet. Yeah, it is a very yeah. good very colorful. Yeah. I really like the colorful signatures. Yeah. Anyways, um, I mean, Crawl's just a cool card. Yeah. I mean, we talk forever about it. No. I think so many people are going to try to play this card, right? Like, yeah. who isn't going to try a Crawl deck at least once? Right? I, right. I've never put together a Tamer deck. I'm already working on a Crawl yeah, deck. Right, so, right, like, yeah. it, it's an awesome card. Everybody loves freaking yeah. dragons, It's going to be a fan favorite for Come sure. on. Yeah. Everybody wants to play dragons. Like... So before we end out the video, we did also pick out a couple like uh, of our favorite artworks and card that we're looking forward to the most from this set. So mm -hmm. um, my favorite art from this set is absolutely Peacefully Reunion. Uh, I also just really like that card in general, but um, I think the bright colors, like I just said about the CSR or the signatures and stuff, I always like those really like popping bright colors. Sure. Uh, and it, it looks like a promo to me. That's like the coolest it, thing. You know, totally. Like, it totally looks like this is the card that you get at nationals or something mm -hmm. for going there. You know, mm -hmm. like just that kind of like festival kind of look that's very vivid and everything. Like it's interesting that it's a set card because this really looks like it'd be an alternate art promo of like sure. a different card. Yeah, it's a, it's a really cool card. It's got like all the champs on it, like yeah, the ba yeah. base champs. Like 
Plus, it's just an amazing card. But on yeah. top of that, it just looks great. The yeah. art's cool. It's got all the main characters on it. Yeah. And what more can you ask for? Yeah. Uh, for me, um, I really, really loved Prismatic Sanctuary. Yeah. I think that the artwork on Prismatic Sanctuary was... Um, just it's absolutely beautiful if you take a look at it you can see all the different colors if you really look at it you see where the other elements come in they kind of yeah. fit with the card yeah which yeah. I love that I think that it's it's just such a cool um, it really encompasses a bunch of what that card is right which is gives you access to all the elements and yeah. and turns you into this super powerful you know player so um, with that being said we also have <laughs> right. our good hey. friend Isaac and uh, you can definitely hear him here yeah yeah um, you stole mine mine's same <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see there you go great minds yeah. think alike yeah, yeah. Um, but why uh, no I like the colors I like the the because the, that was for my favorite art oh yeah, yeah um, totally. so I have a different one for favorite card in general. do you want to start us with the card you're most excited sure. for sure yeah and we covered it actually covered it in the wind video which is uh, wind walker boots just oh, because yeah, of yeah. Tristan <laughs> I want to make Tristan work <laughs> And I think that's obviously what you would do with this. Yeah. So I'm hopeful for that card. I will yeah. say that I have no idea what these guys picked yet. Yeah, to yeah. this day, yeah. like a couple weeks into figuring out, or I guess it's been a week into figuring all this out. So that would be the card that you like. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Kevin? Um, Almost Peaceful Union, but I didn't want to pick the same two cards. And also I feel like I could get very frustrated with that card with Rye. <laughs> but uh, Green Slime, I just think Ooh, that yeah. for a casual deck, I mean, it's one of the first decks that I'm working on personally. Mm -hmm. And something that we'll definitely be putting up to the YouTube channel soon, actually. It's going to be one of the first decks that mm -hmm. I actually like build and yeah. test and like try to make as good as possible. I don't think it's going to get to a competitive level, sure. but I think it's going to be one of the most fun casual decks. So I just think it's it's such a fun effect. There's so many ways to like kind of just, I mean, you know, mess around with it. You know what you have to do? You have to make a Prismatic Sanctuary slime deck. Oh man, bring oh, out all crap. the slimes you want. Yeah. Dude, deck. that then, is sweet. And then your yeah. red slime dies and it takes all the other ones with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it sounds like a great time. That's, oh man, what a beautiful deck. <laughs> that sounds so strong. For me, the card, I mean, okay, um, I'm pretty vocal about the cards that I like. <laughs> so if you guys thought that you had to pick the card I thought was my favorite card or most excited for, what would you think? Peaceful Reunion. Peaceful. Frostbine. Hey, I wrote both of those down. <laughs> yeah. I said Frostbine with a heart or Peaceful Reunion. <laughs> Control funny. Staples. There, yeah. So there you go, man. Uh, I'm very excited to see... Um, cards that are going to slow this game down. Yeah, yeah. I love interaction. I want to sit down for my opponent and play this really cool game where we're slinging spells at each other, where you know conjuring allies yeah. and battling, and it feels really, yeah. really cool. Um, whereas right now, and in a lot of games, you know, combo tends to, um, at least right now in this game, combo has been so heavy. So yeah. seeing a lot yeah. more interaction, cards that can really fight back against combo, um, controls great at that. Yeah. So. All that being said, you know, um, I think that the game is heading into a very healthy spot. Yeah. I think that there are so many decks, and we've talked about so many cards yeah. now. You guys have been here with us. I, I, I'm overwhelmed by yeah. thinking of all the decks yeah, that seriously. we could create. It's an under 100 card set that mm -hmm. feels like it has limitless options, mm -hmm. which is just wild and yeah. really cool. I, I talk up GA, GA so much, mm -hmm. and it's just it's genuine. Like I just mm -hmm. really like a lot of the things that they do. I like mm -hmm. that this small subset. It's just dramatically changing the game. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, I can't wait for this one card from the set. I've got like 30 cards yeah. that I'm waiting yeah. for from the set. You know, so like, cards. it's yeah. not like, oh, I can't wait to build that one deck. Like, no, like, we're, we're, we're going to get these cards a month before sent, and we're going to be spending hours, so days, oh, weeks yeah. of our time. Like, I feel like we're going to be testing new things for months, maybe, mm -hmm. after the set, right? Like, yeah. I yeah. really like the creativity in this game. And, it's just it's it's been so fun just talking about the cards, yeah. right? Like this has been a really fantastic uh, series to shoot. It's a six part series, I believe. Yeah. Um, we will be putting it up as a playlist on the mm -hmm. YouTube. So yeah. if you haven't watched all of them, definitely go take a peek. It's already um, started. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if, you, if you're behind, this is the first one you're catching. Yeah. It's already. There. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's I'm just I'm really looking forward to this game in general. Totally. Um, yeah. You know, set one was already a blast. There was definitely some like issues that did start to pop up and. I feel like they all, they addressed them, all of them. Yeah. You know, like I, I'm really, really excited to see this game going forward. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I'm just excited to, uh, you know, I'm not gonna talk about Ascent today because that would be a whole nother video, but I'm excited to take yeah. us there. Uh, I'm not gonna make Cave and, and Isaac sit here any longer while I just sit and spout a bunch of, bunch of random stuff. So I think that um, I had a ton of fun with this series. I can't wait to create more content with these yeah. cards, with Absolutely. you guys, and um, kind of just take it 
you know, take this game to the next level. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we can't thank you enough for all the views, all the uh, kind words we've gotten on the discords, yeah. Yeah. Um, reaching Good out point. to us. It's been amazing. We're so excited um, and hope to see you guys soon and again with more of our content in the future. So until next time, this is Terry, Cabin, and Isaac signing off. We'll see you next one. Peace, guys. That was good. Yeah. 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 Oh, that could be the <laughs> intro right there. Yeah, just him walking. <laughs> him walking off and me just going, that was good. Yeah, and that as was we're good. wrapping up the video. Yeah. <laughs>